good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Geneva's City Council Chamber for tonight's City Council meeting and Committee of the Whole meeting. Tonight's City Council meeting is called to order, and I kindly ask our City Clerk to please take the roll call. Bruno? Here. Burkhart? Here. Ruby? Here. Haven? Here. Kasserog? Here. Maladra? Here. Marks? Here. Mayor? Here. Swanson? Here. A full house tonight. Kilberg here. Oh, yeah. Kilberg. Kilberg. <laughs> I'm sorry. Way to go, Roger. A full house tonight. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Collins to open that door real quick in the uh, room there. Pete? Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Wednesday is Pete's birthday. So, Pete, you're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. All right. <laughs> Pete, is it a big birthday? No, they're all small. <laughs> <laughs> I've been at 28 for 28 years now, so. <laughs> you know, my thought is the shorter your hair becomes, the older you are, but apparently that's not true anymore. Aging gracefully. <laughs> Wednesday is Pete's birthday, so. He's going to celebrate like he does every birthday. Just hang out in Batavia. Mr. City Attorney. Got nothing for that. Item 3A, folks, a presentation from our friends of the preservation partners of the Fox Valley. My good friend Al is here tonight. Al, welcome. Thank you. The floor is yours, sir. And everyone knows the preservation partners mm -hmm. of the Fox Valley. Absolutely. I'm going to take this off. Is that right, Mr. Mayor? Oh, yes, sir. Please do. Thank you. Well, thank you all for... for uh, and allow me to be with you tonight. So I'm Al Watts. I am the uh, Community Engagement Director for Preservation Partners of the Fox Valley. And tonight I'm going to tell you about our nonprofit organization that's been uh, serving the Fox Valley for 47 years, why historic preservation generates revenue for Geneva, and how we can partner with you to grow. So Preservation Partners champions a sense of place for Geneva, St. Charles, and Batavia. Our mission is to offer heritage education and promote the preservation of the Fox Valley's rich architectural and historic resources. And we accomplish this through educational experiences at five historic properties that we operate and as a voice uh, to preserve history. So these two photos you'll notice are of the uh, north side of West State Street between 3rd and 4th. The one on the left is of about the 1960s and the one on the right is a more recent photo. Some of you probably walked the streets uh, on that left photo there in the 1960s. And it may be even bring back some memories right now to you of, of that time period. Today, that street is familiar. It's comfortable. You feel connected to it. The character you remember is still there. The block looks similar, but it's not identical. Both feel like Geneva. The emotions you're experiencing with these photos are, are more than just nostalgia. This is sense of place. When a community provides a sense of place, people will visit there, move there, and stay there. Communities with a sense of place grow. History provides that sense of place. History helps cities grow. Let's expand on this for a second. Think of Geneva as an outdoor museum. The whole city is an outdoor museum, and the buildings are artifacts. Just like artifacts in a museum, historic buildings tell the story of Geneva. The insides might change from time to time, but the exterior stays similar. The city retains its uniqueness. Nothing else looks like Geneva anywhere in the world. Now, this gives the city character. It connects people. It gives residents pride. It helps people feel like they belong. And it's the same as the vision you guys have put together in 2013 on the downtown master plan which says, and I quote, maintain a vibrant downtown anchored by an authentic sense of place through the protective and adaptive reuse of its historic buildings, end quote. History creates that authentic connection to place where people want to live, work, and grow, and visit, and spend their money. Of course, 
if Geneva residents don't know the history and the visitors aren't aware of the history, they're not going to feel any emotional connection to here. Education, therefore, is the critical component. Because when you understand something, you can appreciate its value. And that's where we come in. We create educational experiences about the Fox Valley history. In Geneva, we operate the uh, 1907 uh, Fabian Villa. It's uh, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. We also operate the Fabian Japanese Garden, which was installed around 1910. That's that center picture there. You all been there, I assume, I hope. Good, great, come again. Um, and we also, in St. Charles, we operate the 1843 Dur Durant House, 1872 Shoals, uh, Shoals Schoolhouse, which is at Leroy Oaks Forest Preserve. And even though it's in St. Charles, you can come visit there too. And uh, our offices are in the 1850 Beath House in downtown St. Charles. Uh, beyond our museum doors, we work on educational programming with the uh, Geneva History Museum, Geneva Library, Geneva Garden Club, uh, the uh, King County Forest Preserve, and many others. And we serve also as a voice for the community on preserving Geneva's history at meetings such as this. We offer seminars on preservation methods uh, like we did uh, a couple weeks ago in, in St. Charles there. We also provide guidance on local ordinances. We develop ideas with property owners on repurposing buildings, which is called adaptive reuse. We've already talked about that a little bit. So for Geneva to grow, change is necessary. You guys know that. But when new buildings coordinate architecturally with the old buildings, and the old buildings are repurposed, the character of Geneva and what makes Geneva great can, can remain. Now, investing in history, it drives economic development. According to research by economist Donovan Ripkema, property values of buildings in and adjacent to historic districts are higher than those that are not. Research also shows that visitors tend to travel further to, stay longer at, and spend more money in historic districts. Preserving historic districts creates jobs, saves the city money by use, utilizing existing infrastructure, and saves the environment. Because the greenest building you can build is the one that's already built. So to summarize, this is how historic preservation works and generates revenue for the city. We have education of the history of Geneva, preserve the buildings, the exteriors particularly, of, of the, the buildings in Geneva. That creates this sense of place, and that sense of place is what leads to revenue growth. Leads to where a place where people want to live, work, and visit. So, how can we help you guys? Well, we can provide five minute education seminars like this at city council meetings um, on local history, because there's always history you probably are not aware of. It's always, there's always new stuff you can learn. We can also give you a seminar on uh, the economic rewards of historic preservation. We can work with you and developers on creating adaptive reuses for historic buildings. We've done that in many places around here. And we can advise on landmarking a building, if, that, if that's something you all need. The main thing is that we're free. We're nonprofit, so we're completely free to, of service for you guys to use. And my goal tonight is to start a conversation about how we can help maintain an authentic sense of place for Geneva. We want that to be something that can help Geneva grow. Sometimes there's difficult choices that have to be made in this historic preservation world, but that's what we're here to help with. So I offer to continue this conversation either at city council meetings like this if you'd like, or I can meet with you one-on-one -on -one or in small groups, however it works for you all. Uh, because the more that we learn about these things, about local history and historic preservation, the more information you'll have to when it's time to make those difficult decisions. And you'll, you'll understand and uh, know what you you can do to preserve the history of Geneva. What, what questions can I answer for you guys today? Thank you, Al, very much. Questions or comments for Al? Alderman Bruno, sir. Uh, thank you, Al. Um, you, know, you hit all the points that I always try to, uh, to make in terms of the sense of place and, and the economic value to Geneva. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't really add more other, other than, uh, you know, looking at the, uh, the scholarship of such things in, in depth uh, really does drive home that we're lucky to have the fabric that we do 
and it's uh, it's important that we maintain it. And I appreciate your uh, uh, your organization. I'm a member. Um, uh, that uh, I, I appreciate what uh, Preservation Partners does in terms of uh, helping us all be good stewards. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else from the dais? Alderwoman Ruby. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I don't expect an answer right now, no. but I have two really big questions I would love your thoughts on sure. um, the library. Yes. And our police station. Yes. I'm writing it down. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, actually, when I was walking by the library, the first thing that popped in my head, and I don't, I mean, this is just popping into my head, so don't go, don't be writing this down or anything, uh, was uh, uh, like a hotel. I mean, it'd be a cool place for, for a hotel. It's just, I don't know that would work here or not, but that's just one thing that popped in my head. But those are the kinds of things that, that um, you know, we try to help with because the building can stay. It's a, that building, for example, is a beautiful building, and I think it should stay. Um, we just need to find a way, a way to use it for something. And there's lots and lots of different ways to do it. So, yeah, I will be thinking about that for you. <laughs> Anyone else? Alderwoman Burkhart. Yeah, I just want to say thanks for being here tonight. It's sure. so good to start having or to, to have these conversations when there isn't like a hot button topic in front of us. And yes. so I appreciate you coming and kind of reminding us that you're there as a resource. And I'll definitely try to reach out to have some more in-depth conversations again before those hot button topics are right in front of us and emotions get so high. So that's exactly why I'm here, because, you know, if we if we if we have conversations about this ongoing, if we can do that then, you know, we kind of are all in the same place a little bit, I think, when, when we have to make those decisions. So that's, that's what I'm here for. I thought your description of why people feel comfortable in a place like Geneva or St. Charles or Batavia, that kind of sense of place that we, um, the history, the feeling of that scale uh, is, I think, really interesting when we think about why people, why Geneva always jumps out to people, when, whether they've visited here or, or just kind of move here sometimes on a whim a bit like I did. So, um, and thanks for your organization or all the support you do to those five historic structures. My daughter had an amazing, you know, uh, school uh, the, at the schoolhouse. Oh, yeah. I think so many Geneva kids spend a day there and that's a big highlight for them in third grade. And then we've done a lot of the summer camps at Durant House Durant too. House, and yeah. I appreciate the ability for kids to remember, you know, what, what their lives would have been like had they been born 150 years <laughs> earlier, so. Yeah, and they, did, did they dress up? Yes, yes. the dress-up and the toys and, and uh, the chores and everything, yeah. So. <laughs> it's fun when, like, it's like you can get them to do the chores on, on like, a farm like that, but as soon as they get home, you want to wash the dishes? No. I, I dragged a yeah. you know, five-gallon bucket of water from the well <laughs> here, but do you want to wash the dishes five feet from No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank I you. I have four kids, so I, I get you that. You understand, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Thank you. Uh, just one more thought, just in response to your um, offer to possibly do like little five minute presentations on a re regular basis. I, I think that's a great idea. I would love to see that. Sure. Yeah. So. I mean, and what, and what kind of topic would you want to, would you just want like, uh, just, I'm just throwing things out there. Would you want like just a, some, like maybe history about some particular property around here or some, something like that? Or the, there's so much history in our town. Um, I, I'm sure that um, you know, even if it's a repeat for someone, it's it's still going to be a good refresher. So yeah, no, I don't have anything specific in mind, but just in general, I I just yeah. think it would be an awesome public service for for all of us for the yeah. entire community. That's what I'm here for. So so you that, know. that's my opinion. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, how long have you been on board? Two months. I was gonna say you you're one of the new guys, man. Yes. Yes. And may I ask where you hail from? Uh, well, I live technically in South Elgin. Okay. Uh, my kids go to St. Charles High, Strike Charles School, so I have one at Redling and then two at St. Charles North, and I have one at the University of Iowa. Oh, no kidding. And yeah. So you, you came to Preservation Partners from where? From being a stay-at-home father. Is that right? Yeah. Very good. So I have, a, I have a degree in history from Iowa State, uh, but... Uh, and your kid goes to Iowa? Y yes, it's very painful, trust yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> So he's paying his own way, I trust. Yeah, right. I, I don't know. I think the checks would be easier to write if it went to Iowa State than yeah. it went to Iowa, but, you know. No, that's all right. She's having a great time there, and it's, oh, it's a great thing for her, so that's, that's good. I don't, 
I don't hold too much against her. There you go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I just I just started her a couple months ago. Um, so like, like I said, I was a uh, degree in history from Iowa State, and then um, stayed home for 20 years. And uh, during COVID, uh, I needed something to do, so I started working on a master's degree in public history, which this is exactly what that is. This is what I'm doing right now is public history. So I'm about a third of the way through that. And uh, uh, I, have, I also have experience running a nonprofit organization. I ran the National At Home Dad Network for four years. Wow. So uh, those two things, the, my passion for history and, and my knowledge of, of nonprofit and doing presentations like this, that's what convinced them to hire me, I think. <laughs> now, are the kids watching tonight? Uh, no, they no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the heck, man? It's like <clears throat> my my youngest is supposed to be doing homework, and my other my other two actually had a Halloween party at North, so ah, they're busy. There you go. They, they have better, they have decent reasons to to not be watching yeah, exactly. right now. Exactly, they've seen enough of me anyway, so it's all right. <laughs> now your office is where again? In which house? The our office is in the Beef House the in beef downtown house. St. Charles. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. it was built in 1850. Yeah, it's one of the oldest buildings in St. Charles. So. Good Lord, wow! And it's still standing, and yeah, it still is. We have our offices in there. We're, we go there every day. It's awesome to go into a, a historic home every single day. I bet. That's, that's like a thrill for a historian. <laughs> exactly. Anyone else in the dais? Any comments, questions for our friend Al? Thank you again for being with us. Would you like me to hand out? Can I hand out some cards to you all? Oh, of course. Or? Please yeah. do. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. I look forward to coming back. You guys are fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why don't we text you what meeting to attend so you can add some fun to it? <laughs> Item 3B, ladies and gentlemen, is to consider the mayor's appointment of Mr. Todd Augustine to the Fire and Police Commission. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Maladra, seconded by Alderman Kilberg. Any questions, any comments? All of you received the email yesterday from me on the beautiful Halloween. Yes, sir, Mr. Swanson. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to, uh, to note that several, many people applied, and I think that's fantastic that we had such a, such a high turnout and so many qualified people applied to be on this commission. So I think that says a lot about Geneva. So I, Thank you. I think that's wonderful. Thank you. We have a motion by Maladra, a second by Kilberg. All in favor of appointing Mr. Augustine to the Fire and Police Commission, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? Please say nay. There you go. Thank you very much. Our, our commission chairwoman, uh, Ms. McMahon, will be reaching out to Mr. Augustine post haste. And uh, if ever there was a apt phrase to describe what he's in, in for, uh, next week begins interviews for new candidates for all sorts of positions. So Todd will be uh, baptized by fire, as it were. Item 3C, proclaimed November 27th, 2021, as Small Business Saturday in the city of Geneva. So moved. Second. second. Alderman Swanson makes the motion. Alderman Marks makes the second. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It is so proclaimed, Mr. Clerk. Item 5 is the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be retained by this council. But first... We have to go to four, as the city attorney so deftly recommended. Amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments this evening? <clears throat> Item five, folks, the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be routine by this council. They can be considered and voted upon with one motion. Is there such a motion? Second. Alderman Kasserog makes that motion. Second. Alderman Bruno makes the second. Any questions, any comments? Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Kilberg. Aye. Kasserog. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhardt. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Cabin. Aye. The omnibus, the omnibus agenda has been approved with 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero absent. We jump down to item number nine. B, as in boy, approve certificate of acceptance for River Lane and Fulton right-of-way improvements. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Alderman Marks. 
Seconded by Alderman Mayer. Any questions, any statements, Ms. Dawkins? Sure, just briefly, the uh, certificate of acceptance is for the right-of-way improvements to accommodate the River Lane and Fulton Street project. A recent site review by staff confirmed that all the referenced improvements are acceptable. Uh, with the COA, the remaining balance covering the right-of-way improvement items of the corresponding letter of credit supplied by the developer may be released. And then again, if you have any more, need more detailed uh, questions and answers, Director Babica is with us this evening to, and he can address those. Any questions or comments for Director Babica? Seeing none and sensing none. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll on item 9B as in boy. Basrug? Aye. Malaja? Aye. Mark? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Wanton? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Burkhardt? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Cabin? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Item 9B has been approved with 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero absent. Item 10, municipal bills for payment. We kindly ask our city clerk to read the bills in their aggregate, which are being recommended by our city administrator. Total bills are $1,561,301.71. Mayor, I move that we approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items that add up to that amount can be found on the city website in tonight's city council packet. The motion by Alderman Bruno is to approve the bills as presented, which are available on the city's website and in the council member's packet. Is there a second? Second. Alderwoman Burghart makes the second. Any questions or comments on any of the bills? There are a few questions in the Q&A emailed to us earlier. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Malaja. Aye. Marks. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno? Aye. Burkhardt? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Cabin? Aye. Hilberg? Aye. Kostrog? Aye. The municipal bills for payment have been approved with a vote of 10 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero absent. We are down to item 11, committee of the whole, items of business. Those are all asterisked. Therefore, presentations of ordinances, resolutions, and petitions under item 12. Ready for this one, folks? Buckle up. 12A, consider ordinance number 21, excuse me, 2021-31, authorizing and providing for issuance of, not to exceed, $8,300,000 of general obligation refunding bonds for waterworks and sewerage, alternate revenue source, series 2021A, and not to exceed $4,980,000 of general obligation refunding bonds Waterworks and Sewerage Alternate Revenue Source, Series 2021B of the, city of, of the City for the purpose of refunding certain outstanding obligations of the City, providing for the terms and security and payment for bonds, authorizing the execution of bond orders and escrow, excuse me, and an escrow agreement in connection therewith and providing for the sale of the bonds to the purchaser thereof. In other words, <laughs> this is like uh, home economics at Geneva High School, for God's sake. No disrespect to, to Mr. Browning, my teacher. Question, uh, motion would be in order. For Alderman Marks makes the motion. Second. Seconded by Alderman Bruno, I believe that was. Yes. Ms. Dawkins? Okay, my summary will be shorter than that motion. <laughs> uh, so bond market conditions are favorable to refund the remaining general obligation bond series 2012A, the 2007 IEPA sewer, 2008-1 IEPA sewer, and the 2008 IEPA sewer loans. As a result of the refunding, it is expected that the city will save between $650,000 and $750,000 over the life of the bonds. Uh, the refunding will not incur any new debt, nor will it extend any of the matures. And then for point of reference, if the city sold the bonds today, the 2012A rate would be 1.18% and the 2012B rate would be 1.40%. Um, with us this evening, we do have Finance Director Rita Cruz and Ralph Alita McKenzie from Spear Financial. So if you have any specific questions, they can address those for you. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> Seeing none and sensing none. We have a motion by Marx, a second by Bruno. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Marks. Aye. Mayor. 
Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Burkhardt? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Kosrog? Aye. Malaja? Aye. And I vote too. Oh, and uh, Burns? Aye. Item 12A, ladies and gentlemen, has been approved with 11 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero absent. <clears throat> Excuse me. Item 12B, consider resolution number 21-89, authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental agreement between the City of Geneva and Metra for the acquisition and transfer of real estate. Is there a motion? Motion by Malaja, seconded by Kasarag. <clears throat> This, of course, is the all police cars will now be trains. <laughs> Sorry, Stephanie. That's okay. Uh, so Metro notified the city that the Union Pacific Railroad had entered into a master, master agreement with an unnamed developer to sell, to sell some or all of the 41 stations to that developer, including the station property located in the city of Geneva. Metra has the opportunity to purchase each particular station on the same terms and conditions as outlined in the purchase agreement by giving notice of Metra's intention to purchase any specific property within 45 days of the date of notice, which would be November 12th. Metra has notified the city that they have no capital budget to acquire any real estate. However, Metra is willing to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with each municipality to purchase that municipality's train station real estate and transfer it to the municipality if the municipality elects to finance the cost of the acquisition. So this evening before you is a resolution um, to authorize the city administrator to execute an IGA with Metra for the acquisition and transfer of said real estate. What I would make known is, again, this is to protect the city's rights and interests. There is a, a lengthy due diligence period that the city would undergo to determine exactly the scope of the property, how much property, and all of that, because the map that we were given was very um, vague. It was as if, quite frankly, a child had sketched it out on a map. Um, so really, this, what we're doing here is to protect the city's right to, to investigate whether or not we are interested in acquiring this property, and this is the first step to be able to do so. So if you have any additional questions, I'm happy to answer those. There's the headline, Brenda. Child draws map. <laughs> city approves. I forget. Brenda hasn't been here for so long, you know. Welcome back. <laughs> any questions or comments from the council on item 12B? Alderman Kilberg, sir. Uh, just looking at the map, uh, most of it makes sense, uh, but the dotted lines that sort of are strung to the north through the parking lot, uh, what, what's that about? That's their right of way that they would be retaining. Okay. Um, but I would point out that that map incorporates a building that they do not own. It, it does not show where the third rail is going to be. Um, so again, the map is, is just very broad. It's like they took a brush and said, somewhere in this general vicinity, we're selling. It, it seems quite odd. <laughs> yeah. And the parcels over there are very odd. So that's why we would need to get a survey. We would need to do all of our due diligence. Was that for a sidewalk, or what was that for? Uh, uh, with the train, it could have been an old spur line. It could be for construction. Okay. It could be any number of things. OK. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. all I have. Anyone else? On the motion to accept the child's map, <laughs> Item 12B. No, it's to accept the IG. I know it is. It's the intergovernmental <laughs> agreement. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Mayor? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Burkhardt? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Kasarog? Aye. Malaja? Aye. Marks? Aye. Item 12, oh, and the mayor votes as well. So I will vote aye. With 11 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero absent, item 12B has been approved and accepted. Item 12C, consider resolution number 2021-90, authorizing the sale of publicly owned surplus property, part of parcel number 12-02-404-014, to Prairiesburg Holdings, LLC. Is there a motion? Mr. Marks makes the motion. Second. And Mr. Bruno makes the second. Stephanie. Okay, so in September 2021, the City Council declared certain real estate commonly referred to as the Water Tower property, located at the rear of 715 East State Street as surplus. Notice of the sale was published, and the City received one offer from Prairiesburg Holdings, LLC. 
Said offer proposed that in exchange for the surplus real estate, Perrysburg Holdings LLC would develop the property and the adjacent uh, surplus water tower property to further the East State Street redevelopment plan and project. This intention is also included in the redevelopment agreement with Perrysburg Holdings LLC, also known as Country Village Meets. A resolution authorizing the sale of land has been prepared. <coughs> Exhibit B includes the proposal from Perrysburg, Perrysburg Holdings um, as a condition of the transfer, the city will be granted a blanket utility easement above, over, and under, and across the subject real estate to allow for maintenance of existing and future utility improvements. Uh, with us this evening is uh, Economic Development Director Temeshenko, and also present is Paul Darrow from Perrysburg Holdings. Ladies and gentlemen, any questions for either Ms. Temeshenko or Mr. Darrow? Alderman Swanson, sir. Thank you, Mayor. It's uh, rare that we have the developer of one of our projects here. So I would like to invite uh, Mr. Darrow up to just give us an update on, on when they expect to be opening. So I know uh, when we first approved this, we were looking at summer and then it fell to Thanksgiving and obviously those are falling by the wayside. So if you could just give us a, a revised update, sure. how things are going. I would be happy to. Thank you. First of all, I have to apologize for my appearance. I came directly from the shop today and uh, had to work with some animals today. So, um, um, yes. Uh, the opening, if I had to guess right now, is uh, February. Uh, the delays are um, related to the construction environment in which uh, everybody finds themselves in right now. Um, subcontractors are uh, heavily booked and uh, they are missing some of their scheduled appointments to come out and do some work. Some of that is also weather related. Uh, the exterior activities, obviously, with all the rain that we've had over the last uh, couple of weeks has delayed some of that uh, activity. And then uh, probably the biggest bugaboo right now is the delivery of equipment. Um, if you've been out there purchasing anything and you see it every night on the news with uh, the ports being all closed and everything, um, uh, some of the equipment is uh, uh, missing their deadlines and they've been pushed back. And so uh, I will say this, uh, there is a lot of activity going on out there. Um, I am in town uh, for, for, to work specifically on that project, usually on Tuesdays and Fridays. I would welcome taking anybody uh, through it if you would like to come out and see a progress, uh, the progress that we're making. We are making a lot of good progress. And if you've been by it uh, any time uh, in the last uh, two to three weeks, you've seen quite a bit of that. And uh, on the inside, uh, they're doing as much or more uh, activity there. So again, the biggest delay right now is equipment uh, delays uh, coming in. So does that answer your question? Or uh, you? More okay. than answer, so okay. thank you very much. All right, anything else? Anyone else? Questions for Councilor Sure. Uh, I did drive by this weekend, and I thought it was looking really good. So I wanted okay. to let you know. Thank you, thank you. Let's hope that the, the weather exterior holds out. Starting to take shape, so it looks great. Yep. So we're very excited. Um, again, when I was here last time, I mentioned we had hired a couple of key individuals, and they are uh, uh, one is actively working for us. The other one will start in a couple of weeks, and um, they're already. Uh, you know, th the first one is making incredible uh, help uh, in. Uh, getting us ready to be opened uh, in, in hopefully February now. So, all right. So. Uh, I just would uh, reiterate uh, what Amy shared. Uh, it, uh, it's really, uh, it's nice to see. Uh, we had a building there for over a decade that was in a fairly rundown state and to see what you're doing structurally to that building as well as aesthetically to that building is uh, a, a real uh, testament to your commitment to the community and, and to your business. and. Uh, uh, we wish you well, and uh, I've received a lot of compliments on, on what's happening there, and uh, uh, thank you, and uh, we'll look forward to that day when you have a grand opening and we can all buy a pound of hamburger. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Alderwoman Ruby. Thank you. Yeah, just echo their comments. I live on the east side as well, and the, the east side of the building looks amazing. It's such a great improvement. So yeah, we, I've heard a lot of great compliments too. And um, okay. is it gonna be a race between you and Duncan? Who opens first? <laughs> <laughs> That's yes, um, <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Thank you. I'm anxious to get a cup of coffee and a donut on my way to work, so I hope they open soon. Anyone else? Always good to see you, Mr. Darrow. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. On item 12C, ladies and gentlemen, we have a motion by Marx and a second by Bruno. Any additional questions or comments? And I will vote on this as well, Mr. Clerk. And whenever you're ready, sir, please take the roll. Swanson. Aye. Burns. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhart. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Caven. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Kosrog. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Item 12C has been adopted and approved with 11 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero absent. Item 12D, consider resolution number 2021-91, authorizing waiving of a competitive bidding and enter into an agreement with Centrisys for emergency repair to wastewater centrifuge at a cost not to exceed $23,029. So moved. Alderman Swanson makes the motion. Second. Ooh. Bruno gets the second. Ms. Dawkins. Okay, so on October 19th, 2021, the dewatering centrifuge at the wastewater plant failed, causing damage to internal components of the centrifuge. An emergency repair is needed for this critical piece of equipment. Centrisys is the manufacturer of the centrifuge and the only certified repair facility. Uh, they performed an inspection of the centrifuge at their facility and provided an inspection report and quote of $23,029 for the repair. The cost of a new centrifuge is roughly $250,000, which makes the repair cost effective. Uh, with us this evening is Superintendent Manguscom, if you have any additional questions. And please don't ask what it means when it completely failed and what happened. <laughs> questions or comments for Mr. Van Guscom? Mr. Clerk, when you feel the power of the centrifuge, please take the roll call. Bruno? Aye. Burkhardt? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Kasrog? Aye. Maladra? Aye. Marks? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Fonta? Aye. With a vote of 10 in the affirmative, 0 in the negative, and 0 absent, item 12D has been approved. We're at new business, ladies and gentlemen. I kindly ask our Assistant City Administrator, Mr. McCready, if there's anyone joining us remotely who wishes to share any thoughts with the Council. No one raising their hand at this time. Anyone in the audience? From the dais, any new business? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the City Council meeting. Alderman Marks makes that motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned, folks. We'll take just a moment to switch over to the Committee of the Whole format. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin our Committee of the Whole meeting for this evening, November 1st, 2021. Let the record show that all the committee members are present in the council chamber. Item two, approve Committee of the Whole minutes from October 11, 2021 and October 18, 2021. Is there a motion? <clears throat> Alderman Kosserog makes the motion. Seconded by Alderman Mayer. Are there any questions from any committee members regarding the contents of those minutes? Voice vote is sufficient. All in favor of approving both sets of minutes, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The minutes have been approved and accepted with 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero absent. Item three, folks, items of business. There is a slight change to the agenda that I will announce now at the request of the applicant. Items 3H, item 3I, and item 3J. Per the applicant, have been requested to be removed from the agenda for tonight while the applicant and their team conduct additional review and consideration thereto. We don't need a formal motion per se, but anyone have any questions or comments? That's the information I have. 
So we'll just continue on with the items of business as they are. Yes. Do we have any um, idea when it might come back, or the, we is don't it kind of up to to the app applicant? Yeah, the applicant made that request this evening, uh, literally just prior to prior to the meeting. Just additional information has to be reviewed on their side of the equation, if you will. So. Okay. Very good. Thanks. Sure. Item 3A, folks, consider a draft resolution authorizing the execution of an agreement with Dakra Tech LLC in the amount of 38640 bucks. So moved. Mr. Bruno makes the motion. Second. Seconded by Kasarag. Ms. Dawkins. Okay, so the Dakra software is used for the issuance of state citations, warning tickets, parking tickets, and managing tow hearings. The proposed renewal is for a two-year period with the first year at our current monthly rate and a 4.5% increase in the second year. Uh, the police department has been very satisfied with the product and it does play an integral role in the day-to-day -day operations. And with us this evening is Chief Pastorelli to answer any additional questions you might have. Questions for our chief. Alderwoman Burkhart. I'll ask you one just to make it fun since you sat there tonight. <laughs> Thank um, you. What is the like kind of shelf life for something like this in terms of, I mean, so this tonight, if we approve it, we'll have two more years, but um, is this the kind of thing that gets outdated at a certain point and we'll be looking for a, an upgrade or new, new software? No, they do a really good job of keeping the software updated. They're <clears throat> a very robust company uh, and most of the agencies in this area are now utilizing them, so we frequently get software updates from them. Good. Is there anything that you wish it could do that it doesn't, or you're very happy with the? Product? We're very happy with what it does right now. We're still learning the features as it goes, and they develop new aspects to it. Whether it be, you know, being able to issue crime prevention notices, just printing them directly in the car, which saves us some paper costs when it comes to purchasing those things. Um, so we're still learning it as we go, but it's been great for us so far. Good. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Alderman Swanson, sir. Thank you, Mayor. I, I had the pleasure of doing a ride along a week yes. ago, and uh, both officers that I rode through were uh, highly uh, en enthusiastic <laughs> about the, uh, the software. So they, they said it make, makes their life a lot easier and, and we're very positive. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you. And Alderman Swanson knows it worked well when it said APB Robert <laughs> Swanson. Fortunately, I was already in the vehicle. That's yes, right. <laughs> talk, about a, talk about efficient. <laughs> Reminds you of high school, doesn't it? No comment. <laughs> Anyone else for the chief? We have a motion and we have a second, folks. A voice vote is sufficient since this is Committee of the Whole. All in favor of the motion on item 3A, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion has been approved with 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero absent, and will be advanced to the City Council for additional consideration. Item 3B, consider draft resolution authorizing execution of an intergovernmental agreement with the Geneva School District, number 304, for providing a school resource officer at Geneva Community High School. Is there a motion? So moved. Alderman Marks makes the motion. Second. And Alderman Burkhart makes the second. Ms. Dawkins. Okay, so the state statute requires the creation of an intergovernmental cooperation agreement for the provision of a school resource officer. This agreement identifies the conditions under which the City of Geneva will provide a school resource officer to work at the Geneva Community High School. And it captures the current duties and responsibilities of the school resource officer. The Geneva Police Department and Geneva School District have enjoyed a positive working relationship as it relates to this position for an excess of 20 years. Uh, the document has been re reviewed by both the school district and the City of Geneva legal representatives. And again, we still have Chief Pastorelli with us to answer any questions you might have. Questions for the chief regarding item 12B. Alderwoman Ruby. Thank you. Can you give us a, um, an overview of what the officer does at the high school? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, they definitely stay busy. Uh, they are there to obviously provide for the safety and security of staff and students in the building. Uh, they participate in interviews if there's um, disciplinary issues that may occur if there's items found in lockers and those sort of things and then they handle anything that might be a police related function that's occurring inside the school 
Uh, just this morning, as an example, they had some 911 hang up calls in the school building. He handled those as compared to an officer coming off the street and handling those calls. So they're basically a police officer in the school, um, but they also have that opportunity to build um, partnerships with the students and kind of take that barrier away. And they, uh, they work hard to build those relationships with the kids and teachers in the building. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, this, I don't know if you can answer. I'm just curious, like with the whole TikTok craze and the bathroom mm -hmm. vandalism, like was the officer, were they able to catch anybody? <laughs> uh, I think some of those are still being investigated. Okay. And, uh, I'm uh, having them on site. <laughs> right. I, you know, I was just curious if, if that was yeah. effective for that part. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I'm also curious, just from the kids in high school talking about the um, other other things happening in the bathrooms that shouldn't be happening. Is mm -hmm. that anything that you can address? Uh, it, like drug use? Sure. I mean, if the officer is made aware of those um, situations, they work with staff to handle those. Um, you know, the staff handles it, and if they find something, they get the officer involved at that point. And we then handle working with the parents and, and handling whatever consequence may be appropriate at that time. So, Do you have any idea how often that type of incident occurs? Yeah, I don't necessarily. Okay, I, I could get that, that information a, yeah, for no, you. I was uh, just curious if you had a, you know, once a month, sure. once a year. Yeah, I know in the last couple of weeks we've had a couple of tobacco violations, sure. those sort of things, where um, three or four of those in the last two weeks. So... Um, but I could get firmer numbers for you if you'd like. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? <clears throat> Anyone else? Alderwoman Burkhart. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, Chief, is this something that a is this something that is a position that an SRO holds for many years usually or usually five years. Okay. Is what we've um, been doing. Then they rotate through. So unless they get promoted or there's something else that occurs, but it's usually five years, which is a good amount of time for them to build those bonds with the, the district. And we've been very fortunate to have outstanding officers in there who really do become staff members to the district. And um, we've been very lucky that way. And then what do the SROs do? Like in the summer, are they, do they right. come they're, back to the police they department? They do. Yeah, they they're have a dual role as a detective. So during the summer, they're back at the police department and they're our primary juvenile detective. Mm -hmm. So they handle anything that might be going on with the kids. That's their main responsibility. Very good. Thank you. You're very welcome. Anyone else? Alderman Kilberg. Uh, Chief, uh, occasionally uh, our, uh, the resource officer will be involved at our middle schools as well uh, on occasion. Correct. Yeah, right. they, it says they high him. school here, but uh, they are drawn in because some of these issues translate to uh, younger individuals as well and I'm sure that uh, periodically they they get called out there's that's correct they definitely become a resource for the district and they do the middle schools and even the elementary schools will will call him if they need assistance at times Hopefully not too often right exactly <laughs> thank you you're welcome anyone else on item 12 B folks we have a motion by Marx and a second by Burkhart a voice vote is sufficient. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Item 12B has been approved, accepted, and will be advanced to the City Council with 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero absent. Item 12C, consider draft resolution authorizing the execution of a reciprocal reporting agreement with Geneva School District 304. Alderman Kilberg makes the motion. Seconded by Alderman Marks. And this, of course, is whatever's printed in the Chronicle, we've been printed in the local newspaper at the high school as well. So. Is that right, Brenda? What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cracker jacks. <laughs> Stephanie? All right, so again, state statute authorizes a reciprocal reporting agreement between the school district and the police department to allow the school district and police department to share information if there's an imminent threat of physical harm to students, school personnel, or other present in the school or on school grounds. The agreement will replace the previously expired reciprocal reporting agreement. Uh, again, it's been reviewed by both the city attorney and representatives of the school district. And Chief, you might as well just stay up there because again, Chief Passarelli is here to answer any additional questions you might have. Questions or comments for the chief regarding item 12C. We do have a motion, correct Mr. Clerk? 
Correct. And a second. All in favor of 12C, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Item 12C, with the unanimous vote, will be advanced to the City Council for additional consideration. Item 12D, consider draft resolution waiving competitive bidding and award purchase of upgrade parts for Geneva Generation Facility to Altoffer Caterpillar in the amount of $218,159.98. Is there a motion? Oh. Marks makes the motion. Second. And Mayor gets the second. Ms. Dawkins. Okay, so the pre-chamber check valves installed on the engines at the Geneva Generation Facility have been superseded by a new design. The check valves of the older design are no longer manufactured and replacement parts are limited to a global stock of approximately 500. The new design check valves will help ensure parts availability in the future and Caterpillar has the exclusive rights to sell these parts in Illinois and as such competitive building was not possible. And if you really want to know what we're talking about, then I suggest we call Superintendent Holton up to the podium to answer any questions you might have. Questions for the Superintendent, Aaron Holton, regarding item 12D. Seeing none, oh, Alderman Kilberg. Uh, it seems, it seems to me that we had uh, an issue as it relates to exclusivity with Caterpillar before. Was it the same same uh, piece of equipment, or was it another item at the uh, generation facility? Uh, it was a uh, cylinder head. Okay. Pretty much everything that's on the engines themselves are, are exclusive to Caterpillar, okay. so we have to go to Caterpillar to buy these parts. So, okay. so would these uh, would these be original equipment yet? Uh, or were they replaced previously? Uh, we believe they're original equipment. I mean, they've been replaced for uh, during like troubleshooting and whatnot. We've replaced these these little check valves throughout the years, but they haven't been, as far as we can tell, they haven't been replaced in mass. Okay. And like I noted in the uh, memo, as part of the maintenance plan, we have to replace them every so many hours. And we're coming up on that limit. So, so th this is, seems to be an enhanced or uh, improved uh, technology then as it relates to this item? Uh, That's what I'm told. Okay. Uh, I've talked to the other operators of the engines around the country that have these, and they say they're a better design, the original design, and we should look and for better performance. Uh, Caterpillar, or uh, who does the installation? Is that an installation that we handle internally, or is that an installation <coughs> that's outsourced to Caterpillar? Um, we will out probably probably a little bit of both. We'll outsource the Caterpillar to come in and help us do it because each one of the cylinder heads has to come off the engine to unbolt these parts, put new parts on, put the cylinder heads back on. Um, and we don't necessarily have the expertise in house to do that. So we'll probably bring Caterpillar in. We'll have our guys help out. And then at the end of the process, uh, the engines actually had to be remapped because of the flame propagation and so on and so forth. Is so, the, oh, I'm sorry. Um, we'll actually uh, bring technicians over from Germany. The factory actually has to come and reprogram the engines. So at the very tail end, we'll bring them over. Good. Okay, is that, is, uh, is, uh, is that an hourly fee then for those outsourced services or is that included in this price? Uh, it's not included in the price. Okay. And it'll be, uh, it'll be the, an hourly, you know, for, It'll take them 80 hours to do it, and so that will be the, the okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else from the dais? <clears throat> Did you say flame propagation? Flame propagation. Remember the TV show Password? Wait, uh, you're too young. Sorry. I'm not that well. <laughs> I remember. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> that would never be guessed. Never that would never be guessed, would it? Okay. On item 12. D, folks. Anyone else? Questions, comments? We have a motion by Marks, a second by Mayor. All in favor of 12D, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Item 12D will be advanced to the City Council for additional consideration. The vote at the Committee of the Whole was unanimous. Item 12E, consider draft resolution authorizing the execution of a contract with Newcastle Electric for installation of a variable frequency drives at water treatment plant at a cost not to exceed 31,350 bucks. Is there a motion? So moved. 
Alderwoman Burghardt makes the motion. Second. Seconded by Alderman Kasserag. Ms. Dawkins. Okay, in June, the City Council approved the purchase of two new variable frequency drives for the water treatment plant. The new VFDs are physically larger in size, which require increasing the size of the concrete pad the units sit on and the installation of a new electro electric conduit and wiring. The installation phase was placed out to bid and the low bid was provided by Newcastle Electric Inc. out of Itasca in the amount of 28,500. A 10% contingency is recommended to be included in the overall not to exceed amount to account for any unforeseen field changes that may occur. And then we have Superintendent Mangescom with us if you have any additional questions. On item 12E, ladies and gentlemen, any questions or comments for Mr. Van Gescom? Seeing none, sensing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of 12E, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? This matter will, via unanimous vote at the Committee of the Whole, be advanced to the City Council for additional consideration. Item 3F. Consider draft resolution authorizing the execution of a contract with Municipal Well and Pump for the 2021 Well Number 13 Rehabilitation Project at a cost not to exceed 258,815 bucks. So moved. Motion by Alderman Bruno. Second. Seconded by Alderman Mayer. Ms. Dawkins. Okay, so well number 13 was constructed in 2007 to serve the water treatment plant. Rehabilitation is recommended due to a decline in productivity and evidence of sand in the filters at the plant. The low bid was provided by Municipal Well and Pump out of Wapen, Wisconsin. The low base bid is over the budgeted amount and the engineer's estimate at the time of bidding. The additional cost is due to material cost increases and we've discussed these increases with the finance director and the cash balance in the fund is available to cover that additional cost. So again, with any additional questions, Superintendent Van Gescom is with us this evening. Questions or comments from Mr. V. Alderman Marks, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in the packet, you said part of the problem was is that the pump is sucking up sand. Yeah, it, it, right. Okay, go ahead. Uh, it, it could be uh, two re could be possible two reasons for that. Uh, one is is that we're getting sand because uh, it's a sandstone formation, uh, getting just filling up the bottom of the the well, and then the the pump is actually, you know, bringing some of that sand back up and and putting it into the the plant itself, just to the to the filters before the RO unit. So it's catching all of that, um, or it could be that we're drawing just too much water at, at the time um, and then that brings up some of the sand but uh, we believe it, it's more of the the first uh, issue so it doesn't make sense since we've got it looks like we're, we're pulling a lot of this part to drill, drill it deeper at this point or no no that? I don't foresee drilling okay. it any deeper we've got plenty of of head above the the pump Okay. Uh, if anything, it would be you know just lowering the pump, but I don't I don't. Okay. I just I figured with sand maybe we would go right. down deeper, but we don't need to. It's just we'll bail it out so okay. it gets back to the original oh, depth. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's what that is. Yep. Thank you. Correct. Appreciate. <clears throat> Anyone else for Mr. Ben Gescom? Have you been to Wapen, Wisconsin, Bob? I don't believe I ever have. What's it famous for? Do you know? That's right. Well, Nothing. What is, wells, it? Pumps, what is it? Wells. Motors. Wells. <laughs> well making. <laughs> I so imagine there's some fishing there too. Seriously? I would guess. Wisconsin doesn't have fishing. Right. <laughs> What's the high school's uh, mascot name, do you know? Wow, I'm trying to think. Close. I gotta You pardon? should know this. I should know this? Wallace the Warrior. Really? How's that going for you? You are a wealth of knowledge. I just Man. looked it up. I was trying to. See. I was thinking, what the, what the heck? So, what, what's so cool about Wapen, Wisconsin? Hmm. They make nice well pumps. We have a motion by Bruno, a second by Mayor, to approve item 12F. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item 12F will be advanced to the City Council for additional consideration, with a vote at the Committee of the Whole. 10 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero absent. Item 12G, consider draft resolution declaring Cultural Arts Commission supplies and equipment as surplus property. Is there a motion? Alderwoman Burghardt makes the motion. Second. 
And Alderwoman Ruby makes the second. Ms. Dawkins. Okay, so the Cultural Arts Commission is requesting that certain supplies and equipment be declared surplus to facilitate removal from storage. Declared items are either obsolete at the end of life, broken, or otherwise not usable. Items have been separated for disposal, recycled when possible, or donation as specified in the detailed list that was provided in the packet. Um, and then if you have additional questions, Director Timoshenko is here and she would be happy to answer those. Any questions or comments for the Director, Ms. Timoshenko? Seeing none and sensing none, all in favor of item 12G as recommended by Alderwoman Berghart and Alderwoman Ruby, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Item 3G will be advanced to the council with unanimous vote at the Committee of the Whole. Again, folks, item H, item I, and item J have been removed from the agenda. We jump to item 3K, consider approval of the estimated tax levy for 2021 property taxes. Is there a motion? Oh. Alderman Marks, Alderman Mayor, Ms. Dawkins. Okay, so the Illinois Property Tax Code Truth and Taxation Law requires that not less than 20 days prior to the adoption of the city's property tax levy, the corporate authorities of the city shall determine the amounts of money estimated to be necessary to be raised by taxation for that year upon the uh, taxable property in the city. The 2021 property tax levy is scheduled to come before the governing body for consideration and approval on December 6, 2021. Staff is recommending a proposed city levy estimate of $5,740,825. This estimate levy was calculated using the 1.4% CPI and the estimated value of new growth at 0.72%. The final levy will be approved in December and the actual final rate will be determined by the county and can and likely will be lower, but in no case higher than the estimate recommended. The estimated levy shows an increase of 1.13% for the corporate levy, 100% decrease in debt service levy, aggregating to an overall decrease in the tax rate of 3.63%. Uh, to put this in kind of more layman terms, a home with a value of $350,000 will see the tax rate decrease by approximately $20. Um, so again, this is something we do every year. Uh, Rita is here uh, to answer questions you have. There was more detailed information also in the packet and some more scenarios. So. Questions or comments for Director Cruz? That's good news. That is good news. Seeing none and sensing none, ladies and gentlemen, Alderman Marks and Alderman Mayor made the motion to approve item 3K. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? This item will be advanced to the council for additional consideration after this evening's unanimous vote at the Committee of the Whole. Mr. McCready, anyone joining us this evening who wishes to speak to us under the public comment phase of this agenda? No one joining us this evening. And what was Edison for Halloween this year? Sleepy. Sleepy. <laughs> Just like his dad. That's good. New business from the uh, council, or excuse me, committee. A motion to adjourn would be in order, ladies and gentlemen. So moved. Alderman Marks makes that motion. All in favor of adjourning the Committee of the Whole meeting, please indicate by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned, folks. Thanks very much.